several compaction systems out there. Um, all of them are great. Um, you know, there's pros and cons to each one of them. There isn't one that's uh, better than the other. Uh, we don't uh, really say anything bad about anybody, uh, you know, with their different system and so on. Uh, it's just when, um, you know, others are trying to sell their equipment and they're telling people to stay away from a track and trolley system because all you're doing is fixing and replacing things. That's totally untrue. So, you know, we have several different systems. Um, I'll show you ours in a second, but there's there's others they call, uh, you know, like orbital, you know, have a ram type system where instead of coming straight back and forth like this, when it comes forward, it'll slightly come up like this and then back, um, which they say will score the concrete, get you get better compaction, better sticking to concrete. Um, a lot of times I think they're, you know, kind of overthinking this. Track and, tr track and trolley systems just on borderline machines in the last 40 years. I don't know how many millions and millions of feet have been put down um, with, you know, obviously, you know, good curb. Um, you know, there are others that have different systems that are, aren't really, you know, they're really not looking at compaction type things as they are looking, you know, to reduce bridging. Um, there's one, you know, that goes forward and then as it comes back, it, it comes up slightly and then back down and it kind of goes in a, in a circular pattern like this, which tends to break up the concrete a little bit on top and it reduces bridging. It's a brilliant idea. Um, they all work. Uh, there isn't one that's, you know, worse than others. Uh, you know, this is our, this is our plunger and it goes on a track and trolley system. Now, some of the older ones, the Borderline produced the, border, uh, the RE500, which there's hundreds of those machines out there. This is the gearbox that goes underneath an RE500. It's on a track and trolley system, but it's a single arm system. Now, here's the track and the trolley that goes with this. Okay, single track, it's got four bearings. And it's going to push this trolley along back and forth. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, those bearings in there uh, last for a long, long time, and uh, you, you don't have to replace those very often. But it's on a single arm system. Now, the problem with this type of system, where it's a single track like that, and there's several machines that have this exact system, is this arm's only two inches long because it can't go any lower than where the track is, and it can't go any higher than the bottom of the engine plate. So this has to be very short, and because of that, your stroke is very short. It's basically a four-inch stroke because this is two inches long. Um, it's basically not opening up far enough to allow concrete to fall in there, and you get bridging. That's when the concrete gets stuck in there, and you got to dig your shovel in to make it go down, and that's what we call bridging. That's a big contributor to this because of the the, sh the stroke is too short. Okay, there's other things that happen, uh, but that's one. Now. When, when your concrete bridges in every second or third shovel, you got to stick your, you know, your, your shovel in there to get it to go down. That's causing you, costing you time, um, it's efficiency, you're going to be a lot slower. Um, so that's, that's a big, big problem with, with that type of system. Now when Patrick Roach designed this, the PR Sting, um, they designed it with the mindset that they wanted to take that machine and be able to do larger curb with it. Uh, you can do an 8x8 curb with this machine, switch the undercarriage, it's not a big deal. That's something you can't do with other machines because they can't handle that. They created a double arm system. It's the same type of ratio on the gearbox, it's 40 to 1, but there's two arms. And the best way I can explain this is uh, these arms can be longer because it's on the outside of the track. It's like a lo the old style locomotives where the arms are on the outside of the wheels. And they have uh, you know, a greater space to go up and down. These arms here are three inches long, so they're 50% longer than those you know, on this, which is going to give you three inches back and another three inches forward, so you have a six-inch stroke. That in itself, those extra two inches, is going to eliminate half of your bri bridging problems because it has more space to fall into that hole to get pushed out. Okay, we've done several other things you know, to help that along. We can go a whole day without it bridging one time, and you know, it doesn't mean that it never happens. Uh, but it's greatly, greatly reduced. Um, there's other, you know, different types of, you know, they have a swing arm to where instead of a track and trolley, the arm will go back and forth. Um, and they just say there's, you know, less wear and tear on parts, there's less bearings to go out and things like that, which is, which is true. But I can tell you right now that, you know, I have uh, my machine sitting here that was brand new in March. It is mid-October. We've pumped about 45,000 feet through there. We'll start that up. You can see it. And I haven't had a chance, you know, haven't had uh, any bearings go out 
or anything like that. It's, it's how you maintain things, it's how you clean um, and you know, grease things and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, to replace a bearing on there it takes me about 10 minutes if it ever happens and that bearing is about two and a half bucks. But if I can put down twice the amount of curb in the same amount of time as another machine, that's well worth it. It doesn't make any sense not to, uh, you know, not to do that. There's other machines out there that run auger systems. You know, uh, one has a double auger in it and so on. They all work. Uh, they all have their pros and cons along with ours. Um, there isn't one that's better than another. Um, it's just the way we look at it is we don't say anything about anybody else's system. Um, you know, but it comes back to where they're telling people, you know, buy our machine because you want to stay away from a track and trolley system because you're replacing bearings every week. That's totally untrue and totally false.